All right, guys, welcome to Mod and Pop Thrift. My name is Tom. I'm a stay-at-home dad for five kids. And I professionally resell things on eBay. I go to thrift stores and garage sales and estate sales some, but a lot of thrift stores and find what I can find to resell on eBay for a profit. Um, this video is going to be pretty straightforward. I got a bunch of good stuff. This is the kind of stuff you want to look for. When I can find an easy comp, I will put it up on the screen. I'm just gonna go through this stuff real quick. I spent $136 at the thrift store today. So uh, I'll tell you what I paid for some of the stuff, but if I forget, the whole total was $136. So I didn't pay much of anything for anything. These are Doc Martens. Now these are made in China. Um, and they aren't the like airwaves with the yellow threads. So these are not high-end Doc Martens, but they'll sell. Um, they aren't really typical like low top either. So they're they're unusual. They they will sell. I'll see if I can put a comp up here. But I only paid four bucks for them. Pay four dollars for boots at this thrift store. These are uh, combat boots. Cap toe. If you look. There's a, a line here over the where this piece of leather comes over the toe. That's called a cap toe combat boot. This is a brand called Double H, which is a good vintage brand. These are a size nine and a half, which is a fantastic size. Uh, right here inside uh, nine is where it sometimes it can be hard to find the sizing on combat boots. Sometimes it's out here. Sometimes it's on the rough end. Uh, leather rough side of the leather is in. Smooth side of the leather is out. These are rough in combat boots. Um, and then the model is there too. X975. And these are Vibram soles. So these are probably this particular style with the cap toe and the high black heels. Uh, these are probably 50 on the low end boots. I don't know about the double H necessarily, but uh, for five bucks, four bucks, I'm going to pick those up all day long. This hat, I just thought it was awesome. Um, 10 years from now, if I still have this, I will definitely be wearing it. Um, auto made in Thailand, but it just screams 90s and nostalgia and uh, people who don't want to grow up, which are the kind of people who like to buy the stuff that I sell. Paid five bucks a piece for these hats. Chicago Bulls, just a, as plain as it can be, snapback. But it's Logo 7, which hasn't existed in a long time. Now this one's made in China, so it's probably kind of the end of their run. But that's a, for five bucks, that's at least a $15 hat. This one is the white, and then it has the uh, spell out on the back. This one is Twins Enterprises, which isn't as good a brand. Made in Bangladesh, but I think the design is better. So that's probably a $15 or $20 hat. This is a really good, that kind of uh, graffiti style uh, graphic lettering. This one I think is, oh no, this one's Twins to Snapback. So that one's pretty good. Probably closer to the $20 end on that one. This is probably more like $12 or $15. It is... Vintage Anco, uh, which is good, made in Bangladesh, but it's a strap back, and it's not a really cool thing on the front, and then it's got the Bulls thing on the side. This Chicago Bulls, this is a good one. This is a nice uh, spell out, and then it is Logo 7 made in Royal Occupied Taiwan, so that makes it vintage. Uh, I mean, these aren't high quality hats. They're not wool. But that's, that's probably a $20 hat, and then this one's probably more like $12 or $15. It's a vintage Anco snapback. Uh, but Chicago Bulls, I live close to... Close. I mean, by comparison of people all over the country, I would live about three hours from Chicago. So Chicago or St. Louis are the teams that people normally root for. So you find a lot of Bulls stuff around here, vintage and otherwise, and, uh, and Bulls stuff sells all over the country. So... If you find bull stuff, it normally will do reasonably well. The vintage year, the better. These are awesome. 
These are, these, the shoes are $2 no matter what they are. These are missing the insoles, which isn't good, but it's not that bad because people who are doing high-end running shoes are probably putting their own insoles in them. Anyway, this is a women's size eight and a half. There are no comps for this. The used New Balance is that in, and then these are a 990V. And if you look in here, they're a 990V5. No, it's up here. It's under the tongue. They're a 990V5. Um, there are no solds on uh, this exact shoe. There are no listed on the, there's one listed on this exact shoe. It's $70 plus shipping. And, uh, but overall the 990 V5s are, there's 270 listed. So almost 300 and 600 plus sold. So they're more than 200%. If you follow me on Instagram, I was thinking it was 207 and 635. So then I said it was 300%, but I was, it was 270. So it's a little more than 200%, but that's a really good sell through rate on some, uh, shoes if you not all new balance are going to be fantastic but uh these are made in the usa in the tongue which is unusual for newer shoes even new balance 990 the higher the number the better on new balance and those v5s are a really high sought after shoe Eight five bucks a piece on these shirts this one's my favorite it is chicago bears fan club it's kind of got a Rasta-y feel to it, except the orange is Bears orange instead of red. Um, it's single stitch, logo seven, and then it's fan club exclusive, I think. I thought this one said fan club exclusive. It doesn't. Uh, 1993. I couldn't find an exact comp on this, but I bet it's a $25 t-shirt because the Bears have a really good following all over the country. They're not talented anymore, but still Chicago teams, for whatever reason, carry better nationwide than like, you know, Tampa Bay or New Orleans. They don't always carry over the whole country. Chicago tends to, so I'm fortunate in that way. Uh, best tag, Fruit of the Loom. This is a... This one is a fan club exclusive, Chicago Bears, single stitch, but this is only about a $12 shirt. It's a uh, XL. You wanna, in vintage tees, you wanna do at least large XL. Two XLs are really good, but if you get down into a medium or a small, vintage shirts tend to run small, and so you're gonna run into problems if you're selling smaller ones. This is probably $12.99 maybe, 15 bucks plus shipping. Uh, cool, cool shirt, and I paid five bucks for it uh, because I have a good relationship with this thrift store and this stuff wasn't priced yet. And I was like, hey, I see you have a rack there. Can I look at it? And the guy says, yeah, uh, just tell me what you want to pay for stuff because he knows from our past experience that I'm going to make a real offer on most everything. Another Bears fan club t-shirt. I didn't find a comp on this one. This one isn't quite as good. It's not as old of a Fruit of the Loom best tag, but it is pretty cool. I think it's a better print than that other one. Uh, I'm gonna say this one's probably between 15 and $20 uh, plus shipping. These, I didn't know anything about. I didn't buy them because they are, I, I didn't buy them because of the brand. Just a nice looking pair of hunting pants. And so they're gonna sell to somebody who needs that size, probably in the $25 range. I paid five bucks. I was able to get a couple of these uh, North Face jackets for five bucks a piece. This one is pink with the purple hit there. And then it's just as generic a fleece as it can be. And so I wouldn't spend a lot of money on it, but for five bucks, it's I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick that up for sure. It's gonna sell for $20 plus shipping and probably only last a couple of days. This is a little bit better of one. It's got a little more design. It's got a hood attached. Paid $5 for it too, and it's probably gonna be, it's probably gonna be $25 to $30 plus shipping. This was a big score. This is a puffer jacket and it's Carhartt brand. And I don't know how well you can see it in this light. It's like an olive color. 
And if this was big enough, I would almost for sure keep it. It's uh, way more modern than the stuff that I'm normally buying. It's got this uh, thing to put headphones through, I guess. Of course, now you don't need that for modern clothing because people wear eye, ear, whatever the earbuds are. Is that iPod? No, iPod is something else. Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. Um, the AirPods, that's the name. Anyway, um, these are a little worn here. The color isn't as good on the toes as I would hope for, uh, but they, and the soles are a little worn out. Shoes are two bucks and I'd already grabbed those New Balance and I knew they were good. And so I wanted to take a chance on these because I don't know anything at all about them. They are CTR 360s. They look like a quality soccer shoe, size, men's size 12. I think they will, uh, I think I imagine they'll do well. If you haven't, if you don't know, now you know. So you look in here and there's a six digit number that reads, no, 366242410. And that number is on every pair of Nikes and uh, tells you, if you type that into Google, you type that into Google and Nike. If you don't type it into Google and you do the hyphen, it thinks you're doing a math problem. Uh, if you type it in with the word Nike, it shows you what those shoes are. So that's useful. Another North Face. This is a really small uh, tech vest, I think is what, that's what Old Navy called them. Um, and it's a, it's a nice piece. Probably, probably $20, $25 plus shipping. This is old Carhartt. It's got that camel color. This thing is kind of worn out in a way that's interesting. Um, it does have the tag cut, so we don't know exactly what it is, but it's a nice piece and it will probably sell in the $60 range. And so I paid 15 bucks for that. And then this is the piece de resistance. Chicago Bulls. Got the big spell out on the bias in the back. It's got the hood attached. A lot of times you find these old puffers and they don't have the hood anymore. I have, for the record, I already have this one and I have another one. And my, but the one that I have that's like this had a, it was a different year. It had a detachable hood. It doesn't have the hood anymore. This one is reversible. Reversible. <laughs> but the reverse side is exactly identical to the reversible one that I wear every day. Um, but this one has the hood. Maybe I'm gonna sell that one and keep this one. I don't know. Anyway, this is a cool jacket. It's probably $60 plus shipping. Vintage Chicago Bulls does really well. Um, and this one isn't starter, it's that starter style, but it's fans gear and it's uh, XL. Now, I mean, if you had a sweet, sick, iconic looking starter one, but the these, it'd probably sell faster. It might sell for a little bit more money, but these knockoff uh, puffers are gonna do pretty well. This one needs to go through the wash but it's, uh, it's a really good piece. And for 15 bucks, I'll probably get, like I said, 60 or $80 out of it. A lot of you guys said you couldn't wait to see all the stuff. Well, this is a good idea. Those, that box is just as full as the other one. Records, and then just stacks and stacks. And it's like, the sealed goofy movie and Peter Pan which are worth like this one's maybe 10 bucks and this one's maybe 20 weird sci-fi VHS uh, these cassette tapes are nothing at all a whole lot of astronomy and geography books a uh, whole lot of these like red line vintage paperbacks that are what I'm calling pulp fiction just a whole bunch of nothing and then we go to the other side of the van this is some stuff that i pulled out just now vhs's all the way up these boxes are my listed inventory kind of stuck in between records and like half of this wall so like this is unlisted 
Now that one, that one's listed stuff. This one's unlisted. This is listed stuff, but all of this is unlisted, uh, basically unsorted. So we've got a lot of stuff to go through, and I probably have at least one more truckload of stuff to get. So see, uh, this is my daily driver reversible bulls coat, but it's different on the inside than the one that I just showed you. Um, that video was from a couple weeks ago. Um, if you like this information, I've got another killer haul for the next video that I just literally in the last like hour picked up from uh, Goodwill. Just trying to scratch that itch. I hadn't been to a thrift store in probably four weeks because I've been dealing with this uh, Christmas, New Year's, and dealing with this uh, hoarder house. I just haven't really had made a priority. Um, if you like that kind of haul content, the next video should be pretty good too. And uh, give the video a like if you learned something. Um, subscribe. Come back and watch our other videos and you'll probably learn something else. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. As always, it means a great deal. Like I just, funny, I was just talking to somebody and they're like, oh yeah, watch all your videos. And I was like, you should, you've never commented. And she's like, I've, I don't even think I'm logged in. So I'm not subscribed or like or comment anything. And I'm like, seriously, we've been friends for like 20 years. Anyway, uh, yeah, do those things. Makes a lot of difference for me. Uh, and we'll see you on the next one, guys. Thanks for watching.